Donald Trump, L, and China's President Xi Jinping leave a business leaders event at the Great Hall, plus, of the people in Beijing on November 9, 2017. Nicholas Assery slash AFP slash Getty Images, Getty a new book by Wall Street Journal journalists Bob Davis and Ling Ling Wei is a must read for anyone interested in what happened between China and the United States, likely the world's most important economic relationship, superpower showdown, how the battle between Trump and Xi threatens a new Cold War details behind the scenes negotiations between the two countries and within the Trump administration itself. Donald Trump told his advisers to bring me tariffs, report Davis and away, and White House staff complied, at enormous cost to U.S. companies and consumers. The book shows the value of people from different backgrounds working together. Davis grew up as the son of an American inventor and factory man who experienced foreign competition and later designed luggage for a company that imported suitcases from South Korea. Wei was born in China, traveled to America as an international student, became a U.S. citizen and later returned to report from the journal's Beijing bureau. Together they produced a book that will serve as a first draft of history. To better understand the book and the future of the US-China economic relationship, I interviewed Bob Davis and Ling Ling Wei. Stuart Anderson, while much of the book describes the US-China trade battle, you remind readers that an alternative strategy to the Trump administration confronting China alone would have been to work with the coalition of our allies as a united front. Do you think an approach of working in a coalition to confront China became impossible because of the administration's other actions on trade? Was confronting China together with US? Allies a policy ever seriously considered within the administration? Bob Davis, from the start, the administration looked to take on China unilaterally. During a state visit in April 2018, French President Macron suggested teaming up. Trump waved him off and said, I've got this one. I think a multilateral approach would be more effective. Beijing fears being isolated. But multilateralism is frustrating and takes a lot of time. Allies might say they are ready to take on China, but it's unclear whether they would follow through. Ling Ling Wei, throughout the trade war, Beijing had tried to capitalize on Washington's alienation of its allies. During a June 2018 meeting with multinational companies, President Xi Jinping made it clear that those companies whose home countries weren't fighting with China would get preferential treatment from Beijing. But despite the lure of the Chinese market, many of the U.S.'s allies have the same concerns as Washington about China's trade and economic practices. A coordinated approach could help Beijing realize that it's in its interest to make the changes. Anderson, in the book, you write, the president's tariff strategy also did nothing to reduce the trade deficit, a major Trump goal. Economists generally do not think a trade deficit is important or that trade policy can really change it significantly. How much of a role did the idea of reducing the trade deficit with China play in Trump administration trade policy? Davis, the president sets trade policy for this administration and he truly believed that the best measure for success was reducing the bilateral trade deficit. As you say, most economists say that trade policy has a small impact. But economists didn't run the administration's economic policy toward China. Way, the president's fixation on the trade deficit actually undermined his trade representatives' efforts to try to get Beijing to move on structural issues such as government subsidies to Chinese companies. Time and again, the Chinese side had dangled more U.S purchases in exchange for a deal. Anderson, according to the book, Pete Navarro said China would be too cowardly to retaliate by placing tariffs on U.S. exports. That proved to be incorrect. Other than Navarro, is there anyone you spoke with familiar with China and or trade who was surprised China retaliated? Davis, Navarro was alone in that view, so far as I could tell, and there were a lot of quiet I told you so's after he turned out to be wrong.
quiet because they didn't want to risk the president's ire. Trump often turned to Navarro to get confirmation of what he wanted to hear. Way, China never hid its intention to punch back, as President Xi Jinping put himself. Anderson, what was the most interesting thing you learned during your research for the book? Davis, for me it was how often the two sides miscalculated their leverage and misunderstood what the other side was thinking. The best example was when Washington was caught flat-footed in May 2019 when Beijing rejected the preliminary deal. The Trump team didn't understand the politics in Beijing. Way, I was amazed by the gradual but sure change in attitude among U.S. businesses toward China, and by how long it took the Chinese leadership to realize that it couldn't count on those old friends anymore. Anderson, what do you hope people who read the book will learn? Davis, it's one thing to identify the problems and challenges posed by Beijing. It's another thing entirely to figure out an effective way to bring about change in China. Way. The trade war has done little to change China's economic system. If anything, it has reinforced the belief in Zhongnanghai, Beijing's leadership compound, that the US is bent on keeping China down. Anderson, you write in the book that if a Democrat wins the election in 2020, the new president will inherit a world where the United States has tariffs on hundreds of billions of dollars in imports from China and other nations. What do you think that means for U.S. trade policy post-Rum? Davis, the economic battle between the two countries didn't start with Trump and won't end if he loses the election. But an administration may ease the rhetorical fight with Beijing and look for openings to improve relations, but the two nations are in the process of disengaging. Way, some in Beijing are hoping for ways to reboot the relationship. President Xi has repeatedly said, we have a thousand reasons to get the China-US relationship right, and not one reason to spoil it. So let's see what, if anything, Beijing would have to offer. Let's block ads. Why? Show your love for him. Click the link in description. Thanks for watching.